All right, chaps, welcome to Silverstone. We're doing the Burkitt six hour relay race again, but this time with Team Darkside, we're having a final dance in the TT, but not in that TT. If you didn't know, Darkside have actually got two TTs exactly the same, pretty much. There's a few minor differences. This is not the one that I had a crash in. There's another one in the garage, which I'll be driving in the race, and Scott's here in his golf as well. It's a bit noisy in the pit, so I'm just doing the intro out here. We're sharing garages with uh, area motorsport as well another vag tuner i think on, on the left hand side vag garage yeah but we'll have a little bit of a pit walk when it gets a bit quieter because there's a wide variety I mean, we've seen some variety of cars haven't we when we were doing these multi-class races as well nothing comes close to the variety that you get at the burkitt there is caterhams radicals we saw last year obviously had an accident with the radical and the mr2 fun weren't it yeah got got projectiled by a radical so we're going in something a bit faster this time obviously with the tt the tt's all fixed up as you saw this is the first outing since being repaired from the anglesey crash oh and as you saw from the nurburgring vlogs i've got some new extra fast gloves to try out today right some brand spankers my other ones were uh, falling to bits a little bit so hopefully these will give me the extra bit of God hand ability out there, yeah, in these uh, conditions, these tricky conditions. You want the spiciest gloves, don't you, for the fastest hands, correct. Any faults? No, it's amazing. It's uh, perfect, yeah? Can you put the M3 setup onto it? Yeah, let me load it. <laughs> Good luck, pal. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. So me and Ryan in the TTs. Scott's out in his golf. He's qualifying now. So qualifying at the Burkitt can be pretty hectic. So the assembly area is a bit of what appears to be old airfield. And then you take a 90 right onto the Wellington Strait. And that's you onto the live circuit. So there's up to 70 cars out on qualifying at once. And there'll always be up to 70 cars out on track at once. 70 teams, 300 cars. See a familiar MR2 here as Scott goes out. So this is the first qualifying session. Track's pretty wet as you can see. I don't think anything special happens here, but Scott goes out, gets a feel for the track, gets a feel for the car. Now for some reason the qualifying sessions aren't online, so I can't see them, but I'm pretty sure Scott qualified okay. I think we all qualified okay, but you know it's a six-hour race, so qualifying's not the most important. Now one thing that's important to know, and it becomes a part of the story later in this video, you're only allowed to race in the cars that you've qualified in. Now remember we've got three drivers and three cars, so not every driver can drive every car, right? So that's just something to keep note of for later on. So next out to qualifying was Ryan, and Ryan's driving the TT that we've not been driving this year. I'm going to call it the second TT, just to make things easier. It's basically the same car. I believe it's got a slightly different turbo. Uh, peak power will be the same, weight's the same, brakes the same, all that stuff is the same. Now one thing that's good about the second TT is the gearbox is a lot sharper for some reason. I don't know why, but you pull the trigger and the DSG does what it should do, which is not the story that we've had in the first TT throughout this year. 
So the second TT has still been racing all year in the MSV Championship, we've just not seen it in the Club Enduro events. But its time is limited at Silverstone today because it immediately starts misfiring, chucking oil out of the exhaust and just being naughty, all around just being a naughty car. So Ryan limps the car around, does his laps, and then it's my turn to go out in the TT that I've been driving all year, the first TT. I said about qualifying being a bit crazy at this event well this is just my outlap just count how many cars we go past Ten's not a ridiculous amount, but still pretty wild, right? So we did drive this car at Silverstone this year as well, only on the international circuit though. And if you remember rightly, we had a mechanical failure. So hopefully none of that today, eh? Now the car was perfect for me in qualifying. I would have liked some more laps. I did nearly spin the car straight out the gate, but... Yeah, the car was, was pretty awesome. It was really good to drive around Silverstone with something with some proper pace. Just coming down to the hangar straight here after going through Maggots and Beckett's we're, we're touching 140 mile an hour. So yeah, that's some real strong pace. The MR2 was probably 115 maybe there. So yeah, big difference. shame the head cam wasn't working because dancing around these slower cars in the wet was <laughs> from where I was sat it was pretty spicy I don't think the static GoPro or the V-Box camera does it that much justice but yeah it was real good
I mean, good. Look good. It's well, right, under yeah. time, and it looks good. Could have been better. So they all come to help when it's Scott driving, Josh. Yeah. They all come to help when it's Scott driving, but when it's me yeah. driving, it's just, just you and me, innit? So I did all right there in the TT. Uh, could have been better, could have been worse. I could have done with some more time. It felt like the session ended really early. I don't know how many laps I got, maybe six or seven. Anyway, we're doing a bit of a split qualifying because there's six qualifying sessions and we're three drivers and three cars. So Ryan's out now in the Golf. Scott's going out in the TT that I drove. And then after that, I'm going out in the TT that Ryan drove. But apparently this one's not so healthy, they were saying. Did you catch wind of... Summit was apart, yeah. Something was wrong with it, yeah. It sounds like a Subaru night. Didn't do an hour driving it, felt all right. When you're going around a corner, it's as though like there's some oil sloshing about somewhere, whether that's in some or in catch cap, and then it just smokes out of exhaust. A little misfire, then it smokes. But now it sounds like it's on three cylinders, so God knows. Something's gone wrong. But this one, this one drove pretty mega. There was a, a weird kind of feeling on diesel into corners, which felt like a, almost like as if the diffs become a two-way, but that doesn't make sense, does it? Or, or maybe a one-way, so, you know, like a real clunky on, on diesel, but. So yeah, anyway, Scott's going out now. We're going back out after he's done in the other TT. So after my qualifying stint in the TT, Ryan then went out in the golf. What an absolute fucking plum. So the diesel golf went on without any problems. Ryan completed his qualifying session. But then when Scott went out in the TT that I'd just been driving, he didn't even complete one lap before the car started throwing some pretty big problems. Scott reported on the radio that the car had no power, so he pitted, got all the fault codes read and reset. It's just dead, it's just dead, just no power. As soon as I went out, had a real hard time trying to get back out onto track. I can't hear you. They're saying you should go on through the assembly area. I can't go, I've had to, they've told me to come out of the pit lane to the back area so that we've fixed the car, I need to go out for one yeah. more lap. Got to go to the assembly area. You can't, they've blocked it all off. I'm just going through this way. Can you find something asking what the fuck I'm supposed to do? Because they said I can't go through pit lane, I'm going to the assembly area. It's all blocked off. I'm in this session. Can somebody come and talk to me? Hello? Fucking hell. Then he finally did get out, but yeah, the car was still broken. There's something very wrong with the TT that I'd been driving. Right, we're going out in the second TT now. It's not perfect apparently, but we'll we'll go out, see what we can do, eh? It's a bit different to the other one. Much the same. I'll tell you afterwards though, because I'm a bit behind schedule. So Dan's managed to get on the emptiest uh, qualifying session. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Literally ten cars on it. Now I was unaware of the issues that Scott was having because I was sat in the second TT ready to go out, which also 
was having a lot of problems for Ryan. When he pitted, he said it sounded like a Subaru. And yeah, it looks like it was even misfiring or there was something going wrong with one of the cylinders. So I went out for the final qualifying session in the second TT. It became quite clear that car wasn't performing as well as the first TT. We're looking at the data, you can see it's nearly 10 mile an hour slower down the back straights, which might not sound like a lot, but that's a huge amount to be off the pace by when these cars should be pretty identical in straight line performance. Given the issues with the car, I decided to pit, but the mechanics were already on with trying to resolve the issues with the other TT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, tell him to make sure we've done three of that. Yeah, yeah, he had done the three. Tell him to stay out. He's already in pit lane. Tell him to go straight back out. Dan, if you can just go straight out and get your three laps done. Stop it. How's it going? Yeah. The best course of action here was for me to just go out and get my laps in qualifying the car and then hopefully the lads can fix the car ahead of the race but yeah not a great start at all only the golf was strong both tts were broken at the end of qualifying So yeah, not the most ideal qualifying, two out of the three cars were broken, only the diesel Golf was functioning as it should be, slightly less than ideal. I had quite a few slides. Oh, it's just done it? It's fun. Yeah, yeah I suppose. What, what were it like when you went out? Alright, yeah. good. The fast round and then there's like a real awkward tight left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning in there, yeah. off the power. Da, 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 da. A less than ideal start for the TTs. Golf's going well, golf's just uh, out in assembly now, ready to start the race. But both TTs with issues. So this TT, the first one that I drove, obviously was fine for me, but Scott went out in it, comes straight back in in limp mode and they couldn't figure out what it was and then the marshals wouldn't let him back out on track which is a bit weird, a bit strange and obviously the second one which I drove just now so slow in the straight, kicking itself into limp mode all the time there's oil all up the back of it just not healthy at all not good, not good day is it? I was just saying I should have brought the MR2 along clearly they need a, you know Old faithful hand might have done as well on the handicap as well if the MR3 was here, but yeah, not ideal. So I think the plan is Scott's going to go out in the golf now, do what he can, get this one, you know, do all this fault scanning and code reading that we can, get it ready to go back out. I'll be driving second, and yeah, just hope for the best. Hope it's all right. If not, I guess get the golf fueled straight back up. Have you got enough diesel to do six hours in the golf? Yeah, take it out of the truck. The only issue with that is only Ryan and Scott have qualified in the golf. Oh, I've not qualified in the golf, so. That's why he wouldn't let you qualify do any driving in the golf. So <laughs> guaranteed he cannot drive his golf. Well, yeah. I mean, you've already seen a couple of weeks ago, I gave the golf a good licking around Coombe. It was good that. I tell you about that, I spent all day trying to match the time in the M3. But I did in the diesel golf in the morning, just chilling. So let's uh, have a little look further down the grid. We've got uh, some of the, the Volkswagen Golfs that are competing uh, in the Burkitt Reel. I want to go a little bit further back, though, to some of uh, the cars further down that will be looking to come out on top. Sounds like the race started. 
Yeah, yeah it's meant to start at 11.45 and it is 11.45-ish. Yes, indeed. So you can see that the uh, car's falling around behind the safety car at the moment, the Renault Megane safety car, and there are 70 teams. So there's there was 35 rows of cars uh, in all uh, on the grid. And it uh, is going to be uh, an exciting race ahead of us, that's for sure. We'll work out who is on top of that as the race goes on. But as you can see, the race about to get underway. We've got um, some cars overtaking already it seemed before they'd got to the timing line which wasn't completely as expected anyway green flags now waving as we head down to the first corner and it looks like it's going to be the uh, mark rice car the capture motorsport car that comes through in the lead of the race for the first time at cops corner i think everyone else is more or less holding position and you could see as the cars got up to racing speed there is still quite a bit of spray andy just to say though that is the 49e car so that is uh, rob garrafel out at the moment in the Chevrolet Lumina. Area Motorsport having a good day. This car, one of their Class B Golfs that we've seen racing this year, they've bumped it up, power up. Rob's going to be driving it next year. Class A. B and R. B and R. Because we need to upgrade the fuel system for A, so it's like... You'll be there though, won't you? Between B and A. There's also a very cool EP3 here today, that area running. This is an X. 24 hour endurance car. It's very cool. I don't know the spec of it or anything, but it's as race car as you can get. Designed to do 24 hour races. Pretty cool. Double spoiler, bro. Wow, we're here. Check out these tow cars. RS6. Oh, <laughs> my habit. Feed my habit. Thank you very much. But it turns out the camera didn't work in the qualifying. Maybe I got some stuff off the other GoPro or what, but if you want to see someone having a bad time, Someone needs telling off Capri Sun, plastic straw, and <laughs> stop me up and then go soggy. <laughs> Good times. Well, in better news, well, I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a good story here and a bad story. So, two TTs, what's the good story? The good story is, this one did have a fault, but they found out what it was. It was mechanical, the boost pipe had come off all things i don't know which one but yeah one of the boost pipes had come off so they're fixing that now and the bad news is over here what's happened uh compression on cylinder four uh, very low compression on cylinder yeah. four very low 60 psi 60 psi that's not enough that is it it would be if you're in like six turbos and nitrous hmm just one cylinder low yeah yeah but the good news is this one the one that was uh obviously driving a little bit better at the start well i mean wasn't smoking its bag off and slow as fuck it's weird how it put yourself into leap mode from being slow, but I don't know how these modern cars work. But yeah, this one's good to go. What broke on this one, Jake? It blew the boost pipe off, which either you've not realised or... Scott. Well, it was, it was fast for me, so it must have done it when he went out. So, these turbo cars, eh? Fucking wank. NA all the way. So which one? This one down here, was it? Yeah. Interesting. But we've got two working cars, so we will have shortly, so that means we're still on, right? I think we're leading the class at the minute, you know. I think so, yeah. One. All right. No. You done breaking cars yet? Oh, it we're all right for me. We're fine for me. My car's a bit posh, isn't it? Healthy, so I can justify the BK on the way home. Yeah, too right. So this is where things start to get quite spicy. I'm in the TTs rigging up GoPros. Scott's been out in this golf for about an hour when suddenly the boost pipe blows. So obviously Scott now needs to pit and get the car repaired, but I am not ready to go. I'm still setting up cameras. And that's when the radio message comes in. Fire it up then. Josh, let me in that Do you need help turn it on, Danny? Oh, good.
didn't get any GoPro set up, I was relying on the head cam, the cam box thing or the V box. It turns out neither of them were functioning either. So out of three potential video sources, I had none. Well, none that faced forwards anyway. I did have one GoPro facing towards me, selfie cam. So unfortunately my first stint, which had some quite nice spicy moments. By the time Scott pitted, we dropped to third in our class and I managed to catch and overtake the first and second position cars, putting us on the top. But unfortunately that's not on video anywhere, but I think the live stream maybe got some wind of it. Had a change for the lead in Class B, by the way. Darkside Motorsport back ahead of Capture Motorsport now. That move happening on the previous lap. Uh, so Capture Motorsport, I think you said that was now Colin Gillespie. Uh, but yes, that's a change for the lead in Class B. That's shaping up to be a very entertaining battle, at least for the scratch battle uh, in Class B. Anyway, between Capture uh, Area and Darkside, those three cars running 6th, 7th and 8th overall. <laughs> side team here which is Dan Sylvester out in the Audi TT. I uh, understand the team have got two T uh, Audi uh, TTs with us uh, this weekend and that uh, they are still ahead of Capture Motorsport who uh, Andy was talking about uh, through that stint and it looks like it's still uh, Colin uh, Gillespie uh, in that car so it feels like a club enduro race there doesn't it at the front of Class B on the scratch results. It does a little bit doesn't it there's uh, a few Club Enduro representatives getting themselves uh, together. Unfortunately, the car started giving me some issues about half an hour in. So I was in first position, but then I noticed that the DSG fart, you know, the, the that, that had stopped happening. So I radioed to the team what's going on. Uh, also, the ABS was kicking up some fuss and it was kind of working intermittently. So the car started feeling pretty strange, didn't feel like it had the performance and the brakes were all over the shop. And when we got a safety car, I thought it'd be a good idea to reset the car, so turn it off and on again. Yeah, control alt delete, that might fix it, right? But unfortunately, when I turned the car off, it wouldn't turn back on. Side of the track. I've been to the side of the track for ages. Hey make... mate, it's just stopped. There we can see, I don't think that was necessarily the cause of the safety car, but it's happened since then, and that is one of the pair of TTs that has uh, has come to a stop. So that is from team 48, is it not? Darkside Motorsport. 
Yeah, that's right. We, last week we saw it was Dan Sylvester, wasn't it? Uh, at the wheel, this car that on scratch was leading Class B by a small margin over Capture Motorsport. This is probably one of the most awful situations I've been in on a racetrack, especially on such a fast straight. Luckily, it was during a safety car, I guess, so the track wasn't live as such. It was under caution. But, yeah, absolutely terrible feeling just being in a completely dead car that wouldn't go. And I'm pretty much on the racing line, so not good. Luckily, the recovery team were out quick. The cavalry is on the way. I got a tow back to the pits by the legendary Land Rover, which saved the MR2 last year as well. Yes, sir. So the guys managed to figure out the problem with the car pretty fast. It was some wiring fault that led to the car thinking that the key wasn't in the ignition, which was also related to the DSG fart stopping and the ABS problem. Basically there was some wiring gremlins or some electrical stuff going on which was kind of linking all of these problems and yeah it's a shame but it is what it is eh. We ended up only losing one lap due to this. It put us back behind capture and area motorsport but only by a lap so it could have been a lot worse. Luckily Ryan was in the golf ready to go and when he rejoined the race it was still under caution so it could have been a lot worse but still very much slightly less than ideal. What's happening? Are they going to come and recover you? I'm getting towed back now mate. You're getting towed back now. Right. his t-shirt through his under armour. TT number two going back home in the truck. I reckon that's probably me done for the day for driving. So Ryan's out now in the golf. He'll go as long as he can and then the thing is I can't drive the golf because I didn't qualify in it. Maybe we could try and be sneaky I guess but technically speaking I don't think I'm allowed to drive the golf. It'd be nice to finish in the golf but I don't think it's uh, strictly legal. Uh, but I don't know, you never know, maybe we can just fib it. I think everyone can appreciate that, can't they? Well, everyone is appreciating it, look. Right, that cam box is unfortunately French, so yeah, just started recording, recorded a minute before the safety car, didn't get any of the restart or anything, so yeah, that's a shame because. It had a red light on it, which I'm sure when I was at the ring, the red light meant it was recording, but uh, I don't think it's recorded anything. Well, it's recorded a minute, and then it's recorded a little bit coming back into the pits, but shite. French as fuck. Right, we're going on a little wander to race control just to ask them 
if I can legally drive the Golf or not. Because I didn't qualify in it, but obviously the Golf qualified and I qualified, so maybe they'll let us, maybe they won't let us. I mean, it's looking like I won't need to drive the Golf, but you never know. So we'll have a little pit walk. I've lost Josh, I don't know where he's gone. But we'll have a little pit walk, have a look at some of the motor vehicles. There's that MG that we saw, caused the safety car. That I, uh, led to me trying to restart the car and it not restarting. That is well bent. So we've got a kind of interesting car here, the Jag. Sorry. Another Jag, which I just nearly got mauled by. Watch out for the big cats. Yeah, big Jag XJ, full Jaguar team. Ah, I see an MR2. Hey, Danny. Hey, mate. How are you getting on? Not yeah, it was alright. Yeah? Right, just had it from the horse's mouth at the race controls. So no, I can't drive the Golf because I didn't qualify in it. But the Golf can be driven by either Ryan or Scott because they qualified in it. But they could only do a maximum of three hours within a five hour window. So you need to go and do some maths. But yeah, I reckon it's looking like I'm probably not driving again today. Right, Ryan's still out in the golf from when I come in. He's done nearly three hours in the golf. I think just under, but there's about an hour and 10 left of the race. So Scott's gonna finish off the race in the TT, hopefully the gearbox, hopefully everything holds together. But I think they're gonna get the golf uh, fuel up and ready to go just in case that doesn't happen. But I'm not allowed to drive the golf as we've, you know, since figured out, so. But yeah, I need to uh, go and find some paracetamol parrots or something because I do not feel good. My head is hurting. Come on, Tom, we need an extension. So Ryan just come in after three hours. Warm. Warm. Yeah, yeah. How's that? I don't know how quick I was compared to It was good. 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 I just got caught out by that safety car, I think, didn't I? That no, was good, mate. Oh, baby. Is this normal? Yeah. It's usually Tom that does it as well. Tom, this mirror, this mirror just needs pushing down, yeah. Got some last minute drama going on. Scott's not happy in the TT, he's got a problem with something, not sure what. It's lapping quite slow, not too slow, but quite slow. He wants to come in and get in the golf and finish in the golf. But he's the only one that can drive the golf because I'm not qualified to drive it and Ryan's done too many hours within five hours. So he's gonna have to come in, change cars and go back out. And we're not sure how that's gonna work, so. Yeah, but he's also asked the team to get a fire extinguisher ready, so anything could be happening. So this is all quite chaotic, so let me just quickly explain what's happening. 
So Scott noticed some problems with the TT whilst he was out. The ABS wasn't working quite right. The DSG fart had gone again, so the wiring problems perhaps not resolved. But most worryingly, he could see smoke coming from the engine. So Scott decided to pit. He told the crew to get ready with a fire extinguisher. But what was really strange is we weren't allowed to ditch the car out the front of the pits. We had to, for some reason, I don't know why, we had to return the car round before Scott could jump out and then he had to run across to the golf. What, what is it? Get you want it? What, is it on fire? Because we're smoking. Yeah, I lost loads of time here, but now it was time for the golf to step up where the TTs have fallen, take the higher ground, march on, finish the race. Go, go, go! Well, what an exciting day, eh? Come up to Cops to do a little spectate, but I'm rough as, man. I need to go and sit down. Oh, I'll be sick or something. Bad times. I wonder if it was the hour in the car that made me feel ill or something else. I don't know, but definitely feel ill. We've just gone on a little bit of a mission to watch the end of the race. And then, it ended well. and then they've ended it five minutes early before we got there. Lovely stuff. Well, maybe it was worth it for the sky. Good view this, should have come here earlier. I was here while you was out. How was you? some videos on your... Huh, oh, sweet. Some gathering now. Yeah, they all clap for the cars, don't they? <laughs> Maybe the coolest car here? Very good. Change everything you can imagine So the end of a very busy, very hectic day. Nothing went to plan, as usual. Very enjoyable. Behind the scenes. You alright, Yoon? Is what it is. Right, that's it from Burkitt. Everyone's packed and ready to go. We've got a free t-shirt out of it though. So Happy days, right? Just don't know what's going on with me. Whenever I do a spin in that car, I feel ill, so maybe I just need to go to the gym or something and actually do some cardiovascular exercises or something like that. All that boring stuff. I still feel really bad now. I only had about three hours kit last night, which is my fault, but it is what it is. But yeah, hope it's been a decent video anyway. Yeah? Oh, it's been a decent video anyway. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one. See the uh, 
dark side team here, which is Dan Sylvester out in the Audi TT. I uh, understand the team have got two T uh, Audi uh, TTs with us uh, this weekend, uh, which uh, we normally just have the one, don't we, in the Club Enduro Championship. And uh, they are still ahead of Capture Motorsport, who uh, Andy was talking about uh, through that stint. Any good? Sweaty. So brutal. Thanks for watching everybody. Just a quick note to say that the past few videos have been very long to edit, taking up a lot of my time. Enjoying it, but wow, yeah, taking a long time. So thanks to everyone that supported me on the Patreon and stuff like that. The next few videos are track videos as well, so there may be a little bit of a delay between now and the next video, but hope everyone's enjoying it. Happy New Year, and let's see what 2023 can bring.